Good morning, everybody. It's a good day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I got a couple of things that I want to bring to your attention, if you would, please. Um, we are in the, the movement of getting a nursery coordinator. Uh, Maddie Baker is going trying to get a full-time job, and with that comes release. Uh, it is a 13-hour, uh, a $13 an hour job. If you know somebody who is interested in having a part-time job, it will be on Sundays, and it will be various uh, evenings, not usually a lot. We do have them sometimes on wonderful Wednesdays if they're doing a Bible study. But uh, that's sort of where we are. If you're interested, uh, this coordinator pretty much does, um, you know, making sure the nursery is clean and all that stuff and does the diapers and all that good stuff. So just make sure that uh, that person is somebody that would enjoy kids and they will be, they will be vented. Is that the correct word? Vetted? Vetted. Vetted. Thank you, dear. My English major over there. So that's good. We want to do that. Uh, attention for graduates, people who have people who are graduating from high school, college, trade schools, wherever that may be, uh, please, please get your information in by next week so that we can have the PowerPoints and the things we need for them. Uh, also, you'll notice that uh, memory cards and sticks with God are two things that we're going to do on the last Sunday that I'm here. Uh, so we're just inviting you to be a part of that ministry. We also have an insert. Jason is child number two. And he will be the, the he is the middle boy, and uh, that kind of gives you a bio of him and the things he likes. They are trying to get a little basket for each one of the kids to welcome them. Transition is hard for kids, especially if they have friends that they're leaving. Uh, this will kind of help them out a little bit, and you'll see some of the things in there. We also have Save a Date. That's actually Vacation Bible School. And they're doing that with older kids. Uh, they're going up to eighth grade. So if you guys are interested in that, um, please uh, take a look at that date and make sure you can come. Um, there is also a mission that we're doing. If you want to be a part of the Peninsula Rescue Mission, they are doing little bags, gift bags to take, or they're calling them care bags, to take to uh, the men that are there. What they do is they actually sleep there but then they go out. Some of them have jobs. Some of them do not have jobs, but they have to go out at a certain time after they get breakfast, and this is kind of a way to feed them some lunch or care for them. You can put things like um, uh, canned non-perishable snacks, those kind of things, hand wipes, uh, bottles of water, those kind of things. So that's in there. Uh, we also have a birthday this month, Maxine. Rollins will be 97. So um, would you please open your bulletin, and you'll notice in there there is a address to send a birthday card. Uh, kind of shower her with some love. Uh, just a, a nice birthday card would be a good way to do that um, and let, her, let you know. It's actually June 8th, but let her know that, that you are thinking of her uh, this, this month coming up. Um, the... Flowers on the chancel area are in memory of very dear people that we love. Um, Alma, Mark, Caroline. Uh, so if you see the family, give them a hug so that they have some shoulders to cry on, okay? Uh, that's an important thing. Um, it's hard, hard, hard to lose loved ones. So just to let you know about that. Um, are there any birthdays this month? Anybody have a birthday this month? I know we had like five in the first service. No birthdays this month? Well, then we're not going to sing happy birthday to you. <laughs> so uh, that, that's where we're going to leave it off. I asked you to please center yourself and focus on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, as the bells ring us in this morning.
Would you please stand and let us share together our call to worship. Today is Ascension Sunday when we celebrate Christ's return to the Father. But this is not a time to gaze upward. There is work to be done. Let's get to work. Amen and amen. The opening hymn is number 312, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. We might need you to play through it one time for everybody because I'm not sure if it's a familiar one. <laughs> Most gracious and merciful God, we come today as those who begin to understand the gifts that we have received. Not only did Jesus die on the cross, he rose again. And it was in that place that we got to see him. But then he left us once again. And sometimes we don't understand why he left. But we do know one thing. He is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And we know that because of that gift, he is still working in heaven for us. Come and be with us today. Open our eyes 
that we might understand this thing called ascension, that we might understand the blessings that we have received. Open our eyes and our ears that we may hear your truth and that we may leave this place strangely different. It is in Jesus' holy name we pray and all of the people say amen. Please remain standing for our affirmation of faith this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> Kids, come on down. Are we getting another? What happened to our other loony? Did it really? Oh, okay. She can have two. She can have one for the baby. Put your wrist up here. You tie it around one time and then you tie it only partially. Ready? You remember your mom doing this when you were little children? She would tie it on your wrist. Did you ever let it go? Yeah. And did you cry? Yeah. Yes. Okay. There you go. All right, the Lord be with you. Cats, get back in the pew. Okay, today we have balloons because it is Ascension Day. Do you have any idea what Ascension Day is? No answer, and you already know all the answers. All right, hold your balloon real close, okay? Ascension Day, I better, I better tie this on my wrist because I have an idea that I'd probably let it go. I better not do that, right? Not knowing me, and then, I, then Butch would be mad at me because he'd have to go up there on a scaffolding. Okay, so Ascension Day was the day that Jesus went up, 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 up in the sky, right? So let's talk about what happened. Jesus came to earth. And we know him as Emmanuel, God with us. He came on Christmas. Then he died on the cross. And he rose again. But it, did he rise again right away? No, he went around earth, right? Telling people that, that, that he was alive and he was there with them, right? So... So for 40 days, even though he could go up to heaven, so hold him close, he didn't go up. So, but then one day he does what? Up, 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 up. There you go. Okay. So let's pull that back down. What's in these balloons that makes him go up? It, did Jesus have healing in, in him? And he didn't. How did he go up? How did he go up, huh? Power of God, yes. 
He didn't need helium, did he? He didn't need helium. So what he does is he shows everybody who he is, and we're going to learn a little bit about that. But then there came a day when he went out to the Mount of Olives area, Bethany, near Bethany, and all of a sudden he went up, 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 up. Okay? He went up in the sky, and he left the disciples, but before he did it, he blessed them. And he blessed them. When he blessed them, he told them what he, they were supposed to do. What do you think they were supposed to do when he went up to heaven? Did they get stuck with all the rest of the work? No. No. Why do we know that? Do we know what Jesus is doing in heaven? You got any ideas? What do you think he does in heaven for you? He prepares. Yes. He prepares a place for you, right? So he's, he's, he's got some access up there. What else do you think he does? He prays and he intercedes to the Father. We're going to learn about all that stuff. So when Jesus was on earth, he was just telling everybody, and he opens their minds. He pulls back the veil so they can know what's happening. But then it was time for him to go. If he didn't go, up, up, up. If he didn't go, I know. If he didn't go, then we wouldn't have anybody interceding for us. We wouldn't have anybody preparing for us. And the third thing is we wouldn't have the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us. Isn't that cool? They're going to learn that. That was a sermon and a sentence. But we'll see if they get it. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for the gift of Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for rising from the dead, forgiving my sins, and setting me free, and preparing a place for me that one day I might be with you also. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Up, 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 up. Should I let it go just to be on me?
our scripture today is, this is the last one from Jesus is Alive. And our scripture today is one that it sounds partially familiar, but partially not. So we're going to begin in Luke 24, and we're going to kind of look at it in different ways so that you might understand what the ascension is all about. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and in this text he adds the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Have we heard that before? Right? The two on the road to Emmaus in the upper room. This is again an account in the upper room. Don't we wish he would do that? Just pull back the veil so I can understand those things. And he told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, resurrection reality, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins, that's when we repent from the sins we have done, will be preached in the name of all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. He was talking to his disciples. Have we been witnesses of these things? Yes. Okay. So you are the witness of these things, and I'm going to send you, point to yourself, send you what the Father has promised me. What is that? The Holy Spirit, okay? But stay in the city until you've been clothed with the power on high. What is the power on high? The Holy Spirit, okay? When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, which is also near Mount of Olives, He lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped Jesus and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. This is the word of God for the people of God, and I believe it, and all the people say amen. Let us pray. Father, we come today as those who may not fully understand all of the texts that you have offered to us today. We don't understand some of the implications of Jesus' ascension, and we don't understand some of the ramifications of the things we don't know. And so we're asking that you would open our mind by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would begin to allow us to be open to those things that we don't know, that you would pull back the veil like you did in the Scripture And teach these things to us so that we might be fully in the joy and the work of the Lord that you've called us to. I ask, Lord, that you would use me today. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. And all the people say, Amen. If you were to list the most important holidays in the church calendar, what would they be? Christmas? Easter? Pentecost, some of y'all do want the Holy Spirit. Not many of you. There's one more. You were in the first service. You can't answer. (laughs) Thanksgiving is not a Christian holiday. Yeah, we worship it, but it's it's not it's not in well, they do have the the Thanksgiving in the booths, that's true. One more. It's really important, and if you don't get it. No, that's part of Easter, the Ascension. How many of you know anything about the Ascension? What's the Ascension? What is the Ascension? Do you know why it's important? Yes, and yet we know very little about it, don't we? I wish you did too. And yet we know very little about it. As a matter of fact, when we understand that Easter is important because it is the death and resurrection, it is the understanding of the forgiveness of sins, it shows us that we will rise again, right? Okay? The birth was Emmanuel, God, with us. Pentecost is the Holy Spirit comes in and fills us. But what does ascension do? It lifts us up. What, is the, what does ascension mean? 
I as- yes, the hope of the resurrection. I ascend unto the sage. I go up on the sage. But why is that different for Jesus? Why was it important that Jesus ascended? What happens when Jesus rises? Uh, the Spirit comes down. That's one of them. But when he rises, he does what? He goes and who said sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty? And he comes to do what? Well, that's, that's, he doesn't do that. He comes to judge the quick and the dead. Okay, so it's important that we understand what the ascension, the ascension is. Can I have an amen on that? Okay, he ascended to heaven and he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty and he will come to judge. When is that? The second coming. The quick and the dead. Who are the quick? Hopefully you this morning, those that are alive. Hopefully you're not in the second category. The second category is what? Dead. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you start nodding off, we'll, we'll know what category you're in. Okay. So, so it is important. It was not only in the Apostles' Creed. It's also what you read today. It's also in the Heidelberg Catechism. It directly and indirectly talks about these theological understandings of what the ascension is. And why it's so important for us. As we go into this last sermon on Jesus is alive, it's important for us to understand that it was because of the birth, the crucifixion, death, and resurrection, the ascension, and the Holy Spirit, Pentecost coming, that we have a complete understanding of what it means to be a disciple and the power of Jesus Christ. What happens if you leave out a piece? How many of you ever cooked a recipe and you didn't you forgot something? It goes <laughs> right? So let's look at all of it. We want the whole cake, right? We want all of it. We want to know what we're missing and why we're missing it. So that's what we're going to do today. It starts when Jesus is in the upper room with them. He pulls back the veil of unknowing. And he begins to teach them all the things that he has already taught them. And he unpacks it. It says in Corinthians that we see through the glass dimly. And if we do not have the understanding and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, does not open our minds so that we can understand the scriptures, then we go through all of life in a fog. I was talking to someone after the first service And he said, I felt like I was in a tomb until I experienced the Holy Spirit. I read the scriptures. I could cognitively get it, but I did not get it in my soul. And I did not understand the difference until the Spirit came and pulled back the veil so that I could understand. That's what Jesus is doing in this scripture. He is pulling back the veil of unknowing And he is parting it so that they can understand what they need to know and so that they'll be able to go and preach the gospel and witness to the things. Because you can't preach what you don't know. Can I have an amen? You don't want a preacher up here that doesn't know Jesus and doesn't know the Holy Spirit, right? You want somebody who understands this word, right? And, and, And listens to what God has to say, right? So that's what we're looking at. Now, Jesus wanted them to understand several things that was important. He wanted them to understand that the cross was not just some unfortunate thing that happened to him. Jesus embraced the cross. He died on the cross for whose sins? Yeah, yeah. So that was important. He did that. Uh, It was necessary for him as part of the redemption plan for man and that it would be in the name of the crucified and risen Savior so that repentance, what is repentance? Turning away from sin and asking for forgiveness. I did that for Carol. Did you get it? And remission of sins, where he remits his blood so that we can be set free, will be brought into the world. So people, easier people will be saved. Jesus opened their minds because until the Lord takes away the, the, the opaque casing on our minds... They, we cannot see, and we do not perceive what he's trying to do in our lives. How many of us are lost in sin? 
and we don't understand. We get blessing and blessing and blessing and blessing, and still we go back to lick up the vomit of the dog. Can I have an amen? That's Proverbs, okay? And we know it's going to harm us, but we still do it. We still eat the wrong thing or drink the wrong thing or do the wrong thing because we don't realize that we've been set free and that Satan has no authority in our lives. Okay? So we begin to understand this. He pulls this back so that the casting off can be gone. And that's why the Apostle Paul says that unless Christ takes it away, the veil lies over our minds. Next, Jesus opens their minds, and once he reveals to them what they're to do, he tells them that they're going to be the witnesses because they have witnessed the things that he has done. What is he talking about there? What, is, what, what do you think the disciples witnessed? Healing? Say what? Miracles? Casting out of demons? What are some other things Jesus did? He healed the blind, made the lame to walk, the blind to see, made, made the deaf mute speak. You put that all together, what does that mean? He set people free. And they got to see what Jesus was doing as he was setting them free so that they would understand that. They also experienced what on Easter? The death and resurrection. Was that important? And they're about to experience one more thing. It is now that they are being commissioned to spread the gospel. He tells them what he wants them to do. He tells them what he wants them to say. And then he's going to empower them through the Holy Spirit. Jerusalem was to be the base. It was to be the place where they were to start, and they were to go out in concentric circles until all over the world hears about Jesus. Remember how Jesus, here, this is important, when he tells them to stay, remember how the Holy Spirit has been present in this Gospel of Luke from the very beginning. Where's the first place we see it? Mary, thank you. Taught you that two weeks ago. Glad you remembered. I have a hard time remembering sometimes. Amen. Yeah. Mary. What happens to Mary? The Holy Spirit comes and Jesus becomes God with us. What's the second time you see the Holy Spirit in Luke's gospel? Say what? Yes. You get a kiss after the service, dear. Hot dog, I got it right. The baptism of Jesus. What does that symbolize? This is important. What does it symbolize? That birds don't poop on Jesus' head? What is it? God's empowerment. God's commission. Ah, God's blessing. What happens to us when we receive the Holy Spirit? How many of you have been born again in the Holy Spirit? Okay. It's important. If you haven't gotten there yet, you need to pray every morning. Come Holy Spirit, fill me with your spirit. Because if you don't have that, your ministry, your life is impotent. And you ain't important. (laughs) In God's kingdom building, anyway. You are important to him, but he wants you not to be impotent. He wants you to be filled with the Spirit. So anyway, we begin to see that. So the dove comes down and it equips Jesus for ministry. When the Holy Spirit comes, what does it do to us? It transforms us and it equips us for ministry. There's occasions when Christians need to stay put. When they haven't heard from the Holy Spirit, they're not infilled with the Holy Spirit. When they've prayed and God hasn't answered yet, If they go out on their own, they're going to fail. What happens when God gives you an idea and you go out and you do it yourself? You fail. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. So it's important that when God gives us commission, that we do it in his power and we we ask him how. How do you want me to do that? What do you want me to do? So um, 
They could not do the work that Jesus has sent them to do unless they're endued with the power from on high. And that power has to come from the Holy Spirit. Now, when he had, uh, when he had led them to the vicinity of Bethany, and Bethany is over near where the Mount of Olives are, and that's where he prayed. He prayed in the Mount of Olives. He met his disciples there many times. He lifts up his hand and he blesses them. What is a blessing? It is a commission. What do I do at the end of the service? A benediction or a blessing? Go in the name of the... Uh huh. Or the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit? Go forth, right? So, so just because somebody is not present in this space, does that mean that they're not a Christian? Does that mean their work is done? No. If anything, it's just begun, right? So think about that when we begin to think about the ascension. While he was blessing them, he left them, and it went up, 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 right? And he was taken into heaven. Now, Jesus continued for 40 days after his, his death and resurrection to show people that he was alive. But when he goes up to heaven, does his ministry stop? No. As a matter of fact, that part where he's sitting at the right hand of God the Father has just begun. Because what is the right hand seat of the Father? Anybody know what that is? That's the power. That's the power sitting at the right hand of the seat of God the Father. And he's given all authority over earth, over us. So when we see that he's gone up and he's sitting at the right-hand side of God the Father, we begin to see why he was taken up in heaven. That's the first thing. All right, this is when the disciples went forth and they worshipped him. And they worshipped him because they finally got it. They finally got it. We come to church and then all of a sudden we're born again and we finally get it. Have you ever read a scripture and you didn't pray before you did? did this for like three years, shows you how dumb I am. Reading the scripture, didn't pray before, didn't ask for the Holy Spirit's illumination. Finally started praying that the Holy Spirit would come and fill me so that I could understand his word. I had a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden when I opened the word of God, I understood it. Why do you think that was? Not only had God pulled back the veil... But I was asking for God to help me. Help me. We need God's help. So with great joy they go and they worship him. I want you to look. Do you remember what happened to the disciples after Jesus died and rose again? Where were they at the very beginning? Anybody remember? We've been going on a journey. What happened? Where were they? They were in the upper room. With the doors locked and they were afraid. Right? Then several things happen. Mary sees Jesus in the garden and she said, It's true. And they said, Oh no, that can't be true. The two from Emmaus come and they say, It's true. And God pulled back the veil and taught them all the stuff and they recognized him and then he disappeared. It's true, they say. But do they believe him? No. Then, just a few days later, or that night, first the first appearance was that night, Jesus comes and morphs through the door, and he's present with them. And do they believe? They start to, because they see with their eyes. But there was one that wasn't there, and his name was? Yeah, Thomas. And he says, I'm not going to believe that stuff until I see with my own eyes and I touch his nail-pierced hands and put my hand in his side. Right? And so the next week, who shows up? Ta-da! says, look here, Thomas. Thomas didn't even have to touch him. Thomas realizes who he is. And it's, it's amazing with just that one thing of seeing him, that he almost falls down on the floor to worship him. He understands. 
Sometimes we have to be knocked over the head a couple of times, huh? <laughs> so we can get it. And then somewhere between that day, Jesus went around all over. He comes back. And this is the ascension. He leads the disciples out to this hill and he begins to talk to them and worship and as they're worshiping in Jerusalem because they know the truth now that the, the truth will set you free and they understand that something has changed why is the ascension important why does it make them joyful well number one it's the ending of one thing and the beginning of another I don't know about you, but I kind of like that scripture, it is finished, right? Because it means something new is happening, but it's scary as heck, isn't it? We, we don't like it when things change, or when they tweak, or, or it goes in a different direction than we expected it. But they knew the ending meant something more, and all of a sudden they're having a purpose and a meaning. So they also knew that because of this beginning that the ascension did not leave them brokenhearted, but full of joy because now their master, they can never be separated from him. They see him in a spiritual realm. And they know, as it says in Romans 8, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything in all creation shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, the ascension gave the disciples the certainty that they had a friend that was not only here on earth, but was in heaven. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. So they knew that the best was still yet to come, right? So does that really explain to us why Jesus had to go to heaven? No. We learn from Scripture that the ascension happened somewhere after the 40 days. The worshiping joy of Jesus shows not only the result of Jesus' ministry, but also the fact that the disciples really believed that he was risen from the dead. In the beginning, they didn't, but they started believing as they began to see the Scripture fulfilled. This means now they would become something different. They would have a public ministry as the followers of Jesus, and they could not hide their love, and they had to worship him. I believe that the ascension is probably the most understated, underutilized of all the scriptures. And I think it leaves us a big hole in our understanding of why Jesus' physical body is not here and why it's so important for us to have and know that he's in heaven. And I'm going to give you four reasons why that is. One it was the coronation of Jesus as the King of kings and the Lord of lords and your Lord, and it places him in heaven. He would sit at the right hand of God the Father, and he will reign forever. How do you know that? Handel's Messiah, right? And he shall reign forever and ever. And it's true, isn't it? As a matter of fact, not only was this a time when they would know that he would reign forever and ever, it was also a great homecoming for him because he humbled himself and he came to earth so that he might then be glorified where every knee would bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, when he arrived, does anybody know what happened when he arrived in heaven? It comes in Revelations 4. The angels encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders in a loud voice were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who is slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all of them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praised and honor and glory and power forever and Ever. And the four living creatures said amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped him. That's the first reason we know. Because when he ascended, he became king of kings and lord of lords. The second reason why we know is because he became our high priest. And yes, Irvin, you are right, he becomes our advocate. 
Why is that important? All right. In the Old Testament, what did the high priest do on the Day of Atonement? Anybody know? Went into the Holy of Holies. And what did he do in the Holy of Holies? He put the sacrifice, a lamb. He put the blood on the altar, on the mercy seat. And why did he do that? For forgiveness of all their sins. Was it effective? Till five minutes later. Right? Okay, so when Jesus goes into heaven as the high priest, remember what was on earth was just an example of what is in heaven. And he enters into the holies of holies, right? He actually is the one, it was his blood that did it. For some of the time? Oh, isn't that awesome? So, were your sins forgiven back five years ago? Were your sins forgiven today? Probably have a lot like me. How about the ones you're going to do? Yeah. So, have you been forgiven of your sins? Have you repented? Will he forgive you? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what happens when he goes in to the holies of holies, he becomes the high priest. He also is the advocate. The reason why Jesus had to go to heaven was not only so that he could enter the holy holies so all your sins could be forgiven, but according to the scriptures, Christ is our advocate, our mediator. It says we have an advocate with the Father, and it is Jesus Christ, the righteous one. When Satan comes before the throne... And he accuses you of sins you have committed. Who's there with the Father? And what does he say? Uh-uh. You can't have that one. They're mine. How many of you think that that's an awesome gift? Yeah. And, and one of the things I pointed out in the first service was that um, Christ is the lawyer that has never lost. Isn't that awesome? And that he stands for you. And the case he presents to his father doesn't rest on your own success. <gasps> or if you're falling apart because of your failures. <gasps> or if you're not perfect. Because it's his blood that perfects you. It's not you that makes you perfect. Number three. Because of the ascension... The disciples finally realized that the resurrection was true. And one day, this is good for anybody that's lost somebody. One day, they would be up there in glory with him. Can I have an amen? Right? Think about that. Because he was the one, his bodily resurrection and ascension went. He opened the gates of heaven because he was the first fruits of those who've fallen asleep. It is because of his ascension of his human nature that we have a pathway to heaven too. And one day we'll not only get to see those we've lost, but we'll get to see Jesus. Finally, Jesus could not send the Holy Spirit until he went up there. Now prior to that, the Holy Spirit would light on people. And they would be given the power. Sometimes it would be given and taken away. But when we, when Jesus died and he rose again and he ascended into heaven, right? He said, I will send another and he will be your counselor and your guide. He will be the one who will come to you and he will remind you of all the things that I've taught you. How many of you need reminding? <laughs> I'm going to tell one on my husband. <laughs> Yesterday we went to Sam's Club, and I said, do you want me to text you what we need to get at Sam's Club? He says, oh, no, no, I'll remember. It's only three things. We get to Sam's Club, and we're going over the list. Here's the funny thing. I could only remember two of them. 
So we had to sit in the car for five minutes so we could realize the third thing we need to get. I think the text was as much for me as it was for him because I knew I'd forget by the time we got there. Anyway, so he told them that the counselor would be there and that he would guide them in all things. That's what happens at what? Pentecost. And Carol's going to talk to you more about that next week. That's when the work of the church began. Because the people were empowered by the Holy Spirit so that the work could be completed. As the angel told the apostles as they stood staring in the sky, Jesus has been taken up to heaven. Why are you standing here? Get out of here. Go do some work. The Spirit will come the same way that he was taken up to heaven. In conclusion, ascension is one of the most important days in the Christian calendar. If we don't understand why Jesus is in heaven now, looking over us, interceding for us, sending the Holy Spirit, teaching us how to live, then we're missing an important element of our Christian faith. Because of the ascension, the Holy Spirit is taken up resident inside of who? You. And if he hasn't yet, welcome him. Say, come Holy Spirit, fill the heart of the faithful. Come and fill my heart. Because of the ascension, Jesus is standing before God and he is pleading your case. Can I have a hallelujah? Yes. Satan cannot, cannot defeat you, reside in that. Today, Christ has gone before you and where he is now, he will bring you one day. Your future is not undecided. Your future is decided. You will ascend and be with Jesus in heaven. Today's Christ's earthly work is accomplished, and this is a big hallelujah. Your salvation is finished. Amen? It is finished. To tell us, da. There is nothing you have to do to earn it. It doesn't matter how good you are, how much you love Jesus, how much your affections are. God loves you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God loves you. God loves you. In spite of who you are, God loves you. And he died on the cross for you. God has accomplished it all for you. Today, because of the ascended Christ, everything in you is different. You see, the central theme of the ascension is Jesus has completed his work on earth and now in heaven is working for you. Guess what? Now it's your turn. It's your turn. It is finished. But is it finished here? No. That's why he says you must go and witness and share the gospel. The disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy. Why? Not only because they finally understood, but because they had a purpose. They had a promise. They knew what the future held. They were no longer just gerbils going around in the wheel. They had a reason for living. They knew what lied ahead was in the kingdom of God in which they will participate, in which we are called to participate, to witness the good news because they had received the blessing from Jesus Christ. As our lives bear witness to the good news, we are called to receive and be Christ's blessing in the world. We are to accept the power of the Holy Spirit working in us and through us that it might transform us, that we might be the transformation in this world. We are called to be changed, just as those first disciples were. We're called to be made new. So, beloved, do you see why the ascension is so important in your life? Yeah. Yeah. Now the question is, will you live in this raised reality? Will you ask the Holy Spirit to come in and direct your life? Will God get a witness from you? Mm. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, come and fill the hearts of your faithful. For those who don't know you, come. Invade all those spaces. People of God, say, I'm willing. I receive you. Come, Holy Spirit. Mm. 
Father, for those who have not been saved, I pray that the blood of Jesus and the understanding, the veil would be pulled back and that they would receive the gift that you have for them today. That they would see you not only as Savior, but all of a sudden their life would morph into a new direction and you would claim them and they would know you as Lord. Father, I pray for those who are in our midst who are confused and need that veil to be pulled back. Make your word alive to them. Put them in places where you can break those chains of sin. Well, they will not go back like the dogs and slurp up their vomit. Well, they will be people who will be set free in the name of Jesus because you will come and you will take over control and power in their lives. Father, we know you won't do that unless we invite you in. So we need to invite you in, Lord. Come, take over. Be the one that's on the throne of my life. And Lord, I pray that in the midst of today, as, as we have heard some news about Katie Benitez, which is Dave and Debbie's daughter, I pray, Father, for healing for her body. I know, Lord, she is on life's edge, and they're probably going to have to do some things. Work, Lord. Go to work there. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. And all the people say, amen, amen. Our closing song is a good one. One of my favorites. Let's claim it as we sing it. Victory in Jesus, number 370. <laughs>
Dearly beloved, receive this blessing. Go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Be filled with his grace. Always seek his face. And remember, you are now supposed to be out there doing the work he did so that others can receive his grace. Go forth in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And all the people say, amen. Amen. Would you please be seated and the bells are going to ring us out. Mary, do you need a mic? Okay. And Sunday, next Sunday, Monday. Monday is Memorial Day, so. Yes. Next, not mon- this Monday, but Monday week. Yes.
as a bishop once said, get out of here and go do some work. <laughs> Kennedy, you did so awesome. <laughs>